So well, I've called it five cycle wins for your ward. And it's fairly small stuff for this. This is small things that maybe a ward committee could fund. Uh, your local councillor could have a word with the cycle officer and small things that sh should be able to get done. So we can get, as well as the big stuff, the big picture stuff, these the big schemes down York Road, for example, you get lots of little wins in your ward and you're the best people to know where these are. So we look at barriers to cycling, quite a lot on that, a little bit on signs. Thirdly, gaps at road closures can make easy bike routes for very little cost. Drop curbs can also open up areas, quiet roads for cycling. And then at the end, look at some cycle parking issues that uh, you're probably well familiar with on your trips around your neighbourhood. So barriers. The York Barrier, this was actually designed in York by the cycling officer Phil Noble, who's head of transport at Edinburgh Council there, I think he was. And it's to deter motorbikes from accessing cycle paths. Bloody awkward to use, I always find, because you have to get your pedals um, uh, one sort of raise to get through the little low section down here. And you see they've, they've been hit a few times. Um, they also make access either difficult or impossible for lots of other bikes, because bikes aren't just push bikes with two wheels. There's trikes, cargo bikes, trailer bikes, or incumbents. There's a whole range of different sizes of vehicle. This one's just around the corner from me. So every time I go to little, I go through this one. Um, and uh, I can get through it, but it could be easier. And some people find it quite hard to get through. Uh, there's also the famous K-frame barriers. These are made in Rotherham by a firm that advertises them um, to stop motorbikes getting onto cycle paths, but they can also stop lots of other bikes getting, push bikes getting onto cycle paths. Um, recently, you can see there's a new tarmac here, and there was a horrible foot plate which was designed in-house by an officer who's still at the council, though I won't name him because it'd be a bit embarrassing. Um, and these are a lot better to get through now, but I'd, I'd, see, I'd still like to see that sort of K, the grey metal bit disappearing, just leaving the white bits that we have, the white post and rail. So we're going to thank Jamie for sterling work for getting these foot plates removed because he did an awful lot of questioning and, and campaigning on that. So it shows that some things can be done easily, some things take a while. Uh, looking also at barriers, these are the cattle grid type barriers with post and rail on Warmgate Stray, which are very similar to Hobmore, but they don't have the horrible bit in the middle. Um, and these are actually recommended in, to use the horrible acronym LTN120, which is called Cycling Infrastructure Design or CID uh, for another acronym. Um, and the, uh, the, there's an example of there in Cambridge in figure 8.4, and they have actually two side by side on a busy route. Um, key thing there that this gap here between the two posts should be one and a half metres wide. I've actually measured some of these, they're about 1.2, so they're not quite to standard, but they are, that was the old standard in LTN uh, 208, which was also called Cycle Infrastructure Design. Um, so these are, these are better than Hobmore, and I'd like to see the Hobmore um, K-frames come out. So you may have similar, and then finally, in barriers, you've got the chicanes, um, ideas to slow cyclists down and people walking on approach to a, a crossing, for example, or a road. They're often, like in this case, too close together. So the, between the barriers, as in about a metre and a half, it should be three metres, or it should be replaced with sort of bollards to make it easy to get through. Um, it gets even worse if you go through the other side there, you've got guard railing, a post and rail fence, and then another chicane. And yet the crossing's really good. You know, that's uh, one of these new um, uh, cycling zebras, I call it, with a zebra crossing here and a cycle crossing parallel to it. So you can, cyclists can cross legally. At a zebra. Now, um, final barrier is bollards, um, and this is sort of uh, you can see uh, immediately just a row of bollards to close the road or just on a on a um, path makes life so much easier. You can you can be chatting to your friend and both cycle through at the same time, and somebody can come through the other way. It's more accessible to more types of cyclists and more permeable. So there's sort of that's really the the best thing you can do to restrict motor vehicle access to cycle paths, but uh, make life easier for us. Just a little bit on signs. Just again, this is near where I live. Um, it's this sign with a cycle sign, but it also got a bracket here. You probably don't know if you can quite see. And there used to be a, a direction sign telling you where this off-road path goes to, but it's, it's been missing for years. So can we, there might be a few of those in your area that you could pick up. Uh, drop curbs, here's a new little 
um, where the swimming pool was on Thanet Road. There's a drop curb here leading to a cycle path. But there's no drop curb on the other side to help get to, get to and from the shops. So those are little things. You've probably got a few of those in your area that you think, oh, wish we had that. Here's another one. Here's my wife coming back from Ascombe Bryan College. And um, she usually just cycles up on the on a, a driveway to get onto this path here and then get onto a cycle path. But ideally, um, there'd be a drop curb here um, and she could then uh, not sort of get mixed up with any people walking on the pavement. Yeah. And then here's a, a new, a very recent one. This is just off Bishy Road, uh, Ebor Street in York. Just came across it the other day going to um, Pexton's and they've chopped a tiny little gap in here. And obviously the, the, the cargo trike there couldn't get through, so they left the bike there. Or I think they live there actually, or they're visiting. But it just shows, you know, um, a little bit more thought taking out that middle bollard and, take, and um, taking out all this um, bit of paving and curbing would have created wider gaps either side of those, those bollards to let um, that trike and lots of other bikes through. And so the gap between the posts should be one and a half metres according to LTM1. So that's a, a figure for cycle gaps. And then finally, just sort of these temporary cycle gaps in road closures at the is the Groves local low traffic neighbourhood. Um, they look about wide enough and they do let all bikes through, probably a smart car if they try to sneak through as well. And they were trying to nudge these rather pretty planters th through. So they put in these big Lego box to really stop that happening. But those, the last two really are the, what, the, this last one is the sort of, this is the, it's the right width uh, that we, we should be looking for. To give you an idea of what one and a half metres looks like. And then there's finally another road closure with cycle gap. This was, I put this one in actually when I worked for the council, oh gosh, how many years ago? 20 odd years ago. And the design guidance there was 1.2 between bollards then. So we got it there yeah, and probably there, we didn't on the sides, but makes the point that you can get a lot, you know, you've got, you've got gaps to go through one, two, three, four, five places rather than just funneling everybody down into one place. So it's, it's permeability is the, and accessibility are the sort of two buzzwords for describing that sort of closure. Uh, it's also got some very nice paving there, um, which is Dutch-like, which uh, I didn't realise. Um, cycle parking then, you come to the end of your journey, you go to, you go again to your shops and here's Costcutter nearly off Chaloner's Road. Got um, parking for 10 bikes and three, this is early in the morning, there's already three there, probably the hairdressers or the shopkeepers, but is the Sheffield Rack, which is a popular cycling hoop invented in Sheffield, so it's a Yorkshire product. Um, in contrast, you've got these horrible, on this other shop, just off Green Lane, round about these horrible butterfly wheel vendors, which are not popular, and some of them have been disappeared, and there's a, a, an apparition here on the wall. I don't know what's going on there. But one thing we'd, we'd like ward members to do, I think, is you probably know places where there's good cycle parking and there isn't, but Identifying areas like this, which we can map and say, well, you know, we need cycle parking here. Um, that would be great. Um, and then a cycle parking, just a small thing about spacing. Um, if you look at, this is in um, uh, York Road in Acom. Uh, three racks here, but if you've got my bikes there, somebody here with a bike, with a kiddie, I mean, how are they going to get the kiddie on and off the bike without getting tangled up with my bike? And you can't get in to undo your lock and all that. So that middle one should just come out and that would give, uh, in, improve the situation. And this is just uh, in Woodthorpe shops, similar situation. Once I've got my bike in there, my pannier is full of stuff. Um, you can't get a bike on that side of the rack. And this tricycle here can't get, no chance of getting between those two. So again, they, they need to be wider apart. So we've probably got quite a lot of those. And looking at the design guidance of local transport no, LTN 1, 120, um, they, they say you, the rack should be 1.8 metres apart, which I hadn't known until I looked up the that up. So they're the sort of five main areas that um, you could possibly look at, and there's going to be other things as well. Then how would we, we could map it. Here's, um, here's all the York wards, um, all funny shapes and probably 
don't uh, you, you I imagine a lot of bike journeys would, would take in a few more wards um one thought thought I had was if we took photos of the locations of these five measures we could send them to somebody um, um and then we could use a map we could map them on a map so with types of symbols for parking needed um, and the type of measure with a photo and that would be a really good record of what small things that need doing around York um, that we can um, make our local ward councils aware of the issues and also track you know, progress and hopefully we'll get things sorted on that basis. So just to summarise the five areas of ward wins we've got um, reducing sort of stymie barriers, um, improving some signs that might be missing, uh, looking at gaps in road closures and looking for opportunities for drop curbs and also cycle parking locations at shops and also some of the sort of design are they too close together. Um, if we can map all those and make our ward councillors aware and start building up quite a, a case I think for you know things could be done quick wins for cycling that um, you can see you know something happening in your ward and you say I, I, I was involved with that and uh, it's it's yeah that would be really good